See if we can get this a little darker so y'all can see that it is clearly winter here in Colorado as you can tell by the snow that's falling down and this incredibly cold and wet seat that I just sat down on real smart of me uh, and with winter comes snow and ice obviously which is why I headed up into the mountains to go to the Rocky Mountain Red Line winter and ice driving event. And we got to drive six cars up there, the all-wheel drive challenge, uh, Charger GT. Got two Nissans, the Altima, man, it's, this lens is like attracting all the snow. The Altima and the Rogue Sport, uh, the Honda CRV, the Acura RDX A-Spec, and finally the Fiat 500X Trekking which all of these were all wheel drive, all of these had winter tires, driving them on snow and ice. So check out how it went. To start off the day, we had a slalom and road course set up. Every single vehicle here had all wheel drive, but not all all wheel drive systems are the same. Some, like the system in the Charger GT for instance, are rear biased, while others are front biased. The Acura RDX A-Spec was the first vehicle I hopped in. And even with traction control off, the SH all-wheel drive system in that vehicle, which literally stands for Super Handling All-Wheel Drive, enabled me to get through the course without harming any cones. 70% of the power in that vehicle can be sent to the rear wheels, while 100% of that torque can be sent to either the left or right wheel. Second was the Honda CRV, which, as a newly refreshed model for 2020, I was most excited to get into the driver's seat. The CRV is an incredibly well rounded vehicle, and while it won't be winning any drag races or beauty contests, driving up into the mountains in zero degree weather was incredibly comfortable, and I had more than enough room for all of my gear. Next up, the Charger GT, Dodge's first all wheel drive charger available to the general public since 2014. Driving wise, the Charger GT is great and a ton of fun in the snow, even with only the V6. The dark cavernous interior left me wanting a little bit more, especially with a hefty price tag north of $45,000. We went around these courses with traction control both on and off to see the impact that it had, and by far the biggest difference was with the Fiat 500X. The 500X was also the vehicle that surprised me the most. The 1.3 liter turbo handled well at 9,000 feet, and the all-wheel drive coupled with snow tires and traction plus mode on had me feeling confident in the driver's seat. That brings us to the Nissans, the Altima and the Rogue Sport. At $32,495 and $30,460 respectively, these were the least expensive vehicles we tested. The Altima was comfortable and offered a surprising amount of equipment for the price, including ProPilot, heated seats and steering wheel, and a moonroof. While the Rogue Sport was more bare bones, bogged down by a 144 horsepower four cylinder and a CVT. Now would be a good time for me to talk about traction control and the fact that we were on a closed course. Now, because we were on a closed course, if I turned off traction control and for some reason the car went out of control, I would have slammed it into a snowbank. No people around, no other cars driving while I was driving, I would have been relatively okay. Use traction control when you're driving in the winter. Don't just turn it off 
I don't care how good of a driver you think you are, traction control is there for a reason. So unless you're a professional driver on a closed course, doing it for a specific reason, just keep that on, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? So after the slalom event that we did in the parking lot, uh, we went, went to lunch and when we got back, the team had cleared the entire slalom course and we did drag races. So the point of the drag race is to go as quick as possible, but also you had to do a turn at the end and kind of go through a little bit of a, a road course. And then you had to stop within a box. And if you slid past it, automatically lost. You have to stop within the cones and whoever did it quickly was the winner. This was a snow and ice event. And like last year, uh, the, the plan was to drive on Lake Georgetown, which is up in the mountains, and tons of ice on that lake. If anybody's ever been to Colorado, you know that the weather can be unpredictable. Yesterday was 65 and sunny here. Today it is cold and snowing like crazy. And in that same fashion, the ice, that the lake that was frozen over, tons of ice on it, got completely dumped on with snow, over two feet of snow, right before the event. They tried to clear it off, weren't able to, so unfortunately we, we didn't get to drive on the ice, which is what I was really looking forward to um, most out of this event. Uh, we didn't get to drive on the ice at all. We stayed on the snow this year, but if you check out this video that's linked below, I'll show a couple clips here. Um, I'll link it below. That's our winter driving event from last year where we did get to go out on the ice and experience. Whoo! That was a gust of wind. Oh my gosh. We did get to experience uh, the ice driving. And with that, I'm gonna go inside. Uh, before I go, please hit like. It helps us with these videos. It helps us create more videos. Um, hit subscribe and ring that bell. That way you'll be notified every time we have a new video, which for right now is pretty often. It's gonna be a little less often um, just because of all the coronavirus stuff that's going on. Uh, we don't get as many cars and we're not in the office. We're all working from home as a team, but still creating content, still doing gaming stuff, still doing podcasts, and hopefully creating some new stuff for you here pretty soon. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching that winter driving video. Uh, one more thing before I go. This is the second winter driving test that I've done this year. Did one with Michelin in Montreal and then one here in Colorado. And the one thing that I have to say about winter driving, regardless of the vehicle that you have, is get winter tires. Winter tire, like all these cars had winter tires. That was a given. Um, last year, the group of vehicles, all but one had winter tires and that one, it was very apparent that they needed them. So winter tires, regardless of if you have an all wheel drive vehicle or a rear wheel drive vehicle or a front wheel drive vehicle, they will help you big time in winter driving conditions. Even if you have an all wheel drive vehicle, as soon as you hit the brakes, it's not an all wheel drive vehicle anymore. Those, those wheels are stopped moving and uh, the tires are what's going to help you on slick surfaces. If you live in an area where it routinely gets under 44 degrees, which is generally the high end of uh, temperature rating for winter tires before they start wearing a lot quicker, um, if you live in an area that stays under 44, get winter tires. It'll help you out a lot, and it'll keep everybody safe, you and the drivers around you on the road.